Hi all, let's go over another very entertaining gambit today called the England Gambit, not England. So I'm from England. So England. So this is named after a Swedish player, Fritz Carl Anton England, uh, who lived between 1871 and 1933. He actually sponsored a thematic tournament in which all the games had to begin um, after a certain move at move four, queen d5, which we'll check out later. So it's within uh, this interesting gambit, uh, his particular move order, that he organized something for and got the name, quite interestingly. Uh, so we're going to have a look at the first um, move, <laughs> which is uh, for white to play d4. So it's, it's against d4. Now, as many of you know, I like playing quite outrageous gambits, especially in Blitz. So I've played the Albin Counter Gambit a lot more than the Budapest Gambit, but they are all fairly dodgy. What they do have in common is they sometimes they attack the dark squares quite nicely. And in a way, I've been playing the Tango to get a kind of dark square strategy free of charge without too much risk sometimes, you know, with great positions for free. But with these gambits, sometimes you do get also extra piece pressure. And the problem you may have noticed on all those Albin counter gambit videos I played, that if I played d5, I rely on c4 to be able to play e5 here. So this is a bit of a, a heavy requirement, actually, because quite often people will just play the very annoying move, knight f3, to just stop this e5 altogether. So there's a bit of, tr of a trade-off here. If you want to play an even dodgier gambit, um, or the, the less dodgy gambit would be uh, a Budapest. So knight f6, you wait for c4, and then e5. The Budapest is also striking at e5. So you see with the e5 move in general, you're sort of trying to dismantle white a little bit on the dark squares. You see that the dark squares, if this pawn's dislodged, uh, there, there are dark squares that kind of maybe attack more easily later. Uh, so this England gamut is is super outrageous. It's really immediately attacking without any preparation. White's pawn, like a madman, total madman. Uh, but here, at this point, it's actually, I think more accurately named the, the Charlick uh, gambit. So here is e5, the, like the Charlick gambit. So you can, the beauty of it is, in relation to uh, the other two dodgy gamuts I've been playing in Blitz, is that you can get to it by force, basically, after d4. There's none of this knight f3, it's too late. So you can get to your, your favorite gambit, if you do make this a favorite, which I wouldn't, because it's pretty dodgy. But if you did uh, against lower rated players, you can get to it quite easily. So if white plays d5, we do get a very, very nice dark square strategy. You know, these dark squares have been compromised on d5. Bishop c5, if you check with engines about this position, it's already pretty equal. You know, if anything, black's better. There's no problems. The, the adjacent dark square weaknesses are pretty clear. And that's why I like the tango. You get, you know, a nice dark square counterplay quite often. Um, so anyway, the problem is you are losing a pawn if white takes up the challenge with d takes e5. So here is where the fun begins. Now, Knight c6 is the England uh, gambit continuation. Uh, before we go on to the main line, you know, which is considered the main line, knight c6, let's have a look at some really dodgy moves here, uh, which would, I think, only work in a bullet chess context. So f6. And if they take, I have had some bullet games, I believe, which, which do have this crazy path where I'm permitted to play queen e8 and h5 to, to h5 later. And I, I've often, I've actually won a ton of bullet games with this kind of system. Uh, you could call it, um, yeah, it's it's like uh, s some gambits for white in reverse. Uh, you know, black uh, dame gambit. So in reverse. Um, so that is really dodgy. But, you know, white can easily do much better after f6. Uh, you know, for example, uh, e4, and then you can't really take this pawn because there's queen h5 check. 
and that's end of game basically it's gonna be end of game so yeah this is super dodgy f6 it's really you know white bypassing with e4 with a big advantage if knight c6 knight f3 it's just gonna be super comfortable uh, there's very little compensation white's getting a big advantage here if just to see your pawns and has a fairly stable possession so f6 is really really dodgy <laughs> but in a way what I'm about to show you is very very dodgy it has one benefit there is a probability a small probability of a disaster for white which is why the continuation of knight c6 is the main line of this so let's before we go into the main line which is mostly disastrous except for one or two traps let's also check out d6 so this is actually uh the the basis of the charlotte gambit here actually d6 so this player um i believe charlotte played it so d6 here and i can see that after e takes this you can see that if black castles queenside later this is a fantasy line that black, especially in bullet chess, might actually be getting a good possession. For example, like this. Uh, this this is interesting stuff. Uh, it's all crazy stuff. If we look at this d6 here, so this this Charlotte gambit, if white takes, um, and I would consider this nowadays far less dodgy than f6 actually, because I quite like the idea, the concept of castling queenside. Uh, if instead of e4 there uh, bishop g5 just to put the castling queenside concept on the board uh, for example here black could end up already uh, having an advantage actually and yeah I have had fun games like this in bullet chess as well so that's why I'm mentioning these <laughs> very ugly sisters of knight c6 but then they're not ugly they're beautiful in bullet it, it can lead to wonderful stuff in bullet but here today we're looking at the England gambit with knight c6 so the main line avoiding um, those those uh, sisters f6 and d6 there's also okay while we're about it uh, th there might be other stuff as well actually let's not let's not get into that so knight c6 and here uh, white usually protects with knight f3 and now we have a range of moves here to explore the main line is Queen e7. So this was actually introduced by Carlos Bettens, who also apparently established the Latvian gambit. So, you know, a real gambit lover that introduced this move, Queen e7. Uh, so before we get into Queen e7, here, let's, let's look at some other uh, interesting stuff for a moment. d6 here, so delaying, you know, to, to commit white to knight f3. We might be able to get a similar sort of pattern that I was uh, kind of emphasizing that if you get to castle queenside, like this would be a disaster for white uh, if, if, if they really played badly. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you might be able to castle queenside in this. Let's have a look at this again. Uh, so same knight d2, you get to castle queenside. And I, I believe this is great fun for bullet chess this kind of possession is you, you've got quite a bit of pressure uh, sorry not knight d4 no pardon me not knight d4 knight d7 and then bishop e5 this is a this is an accurate way to play with the black pieces and actually after g5 you've got a raging attack and it's not so funny for white now is it after bishop e6 uh, it's a very very dangerous pin on the d file with g4 coming in this this is this is uh, you know a very very interesting uh, system this whole d6 which you might never explore because people are, are talking about the, you know the trap the England gambit trap with Queen e7 but while we're here yeah let's look at d so that's a brief tour of d6 and also let's look at the f6 move which has actually got a name to it with the delayed knight c6 knight f3 actually it gets promoted to have at least the name the Soler gambit named after Carl Soler and so after e takes knight takes e4 d5 for example this possession uh, is actually black might actually be doing okay for example here so we've got the semi open f file we've got this prospect of queen h5 later that PSAC is actually kind of justified here uh, white's really tied down black can build up it's pretty dangerous for white 
Uh, so f6 is interesting knight g e7 is the uh, zilber mince gambit and yes this is all on wiki as well i haven't just made this up if you want to check zilber <laughs> zilber mince uh so here uh, this looks extremely dodgy doesn't it and you're right white does have a big advantage i can't really see the point i wouldn't uh, necessarily play that myself uh there's uh bishop c5 which is also for some reason given a name the Fellbecker gambit and uh, maybe you can mix it up in bullet games so the Fellbecker gambit but yeah we're going to go to the main line which is this queen e7 which is mostly disastrous except for a few lines so queen e7 so introduced by Carlos Mettins now here uh, so the England Gambit got its name because of this formatic tournament with Queen d5. And in fact, I'll set this formatic tournament up at Chessworld. If you if you go to Chessworld via bit.ly slash Chessworld or kingscrusher.tv, register there, check out the formatic tournaments. Let's recreate this. Actually, the original spirit was testing Queen d5 here. Uh, this is actually quite generous for White to do this because it is a potential tempo gainer. And actually, this is the one move that might make f6 actually more than zero <laughs> effective in most of the time actually f6 might have some bite to it here so queen um, d5 uh, let's have a look at this first instead of the mainline bishop f4 so queen d5 so this swedish player between 1871 and 1933 um uh carlos uh, anton um you know sponsored this formatic and here f6 i guess was all the rage in the formatic tournament where queen b3 d5 uh white has to play a little bit carefully for example bishop d7 is a little bit dynamic not just offering a c pawn for a, a road there but there's also knight a5 possibilities and actually for example here you can see things going actually quite disastrously wrong for right uh, for white already for example here knight d4 and that's the end of the game for white so that's that's really interesting queen d5 can lead to a lot of trouble that that can happen quite a lot you're giving a big tempo gaining target to the opponent so this is not really the way to play against this queen e7 i really wouldn't recommend it it does seem to me that f6 is actually yeah significantly justified here if we just look at this again with queen d1 just going all the way back then black's gonna be having a little bit of fun here castling queenside so that's queen d5 but that's not the main uh line uh we can have a look also for a moment at knight c3 now here in knight, in the knight c3 line knight takes knight d5 this uh actually uh was played by the cheeky <laughs> Uh, Hambleton, a man Hambleton, who's uh, one of the chess bros, and he actually did actually beat a uh, 2155 with the black pieces in the in the Reykjavik uh, Open of 2019. Congratulations to him also for recently, well, in recent years, getting the Grandmaster title. So fantastic achievement there, and he he did actually manage to win with the black pieces. I bet you he had this in mind <laughs> in getting into the one key stem games in a fairly high level, you know, fide one day uh, tournament so congratulations to him winning with the black pieces from here as well so that's uh in that line with uh yeah this knight c3 business here uh but that's that's not critical i mean there are actually it's still okay for white that um but I think the most critical test is Bishop F4, and I know it may look really daft in a way because it's a loose piece in it, and, the, and there's potential issues with it. Before we get into Bishop F4, was there anything else I wanted to just check out? Uh, e4. If White plays e4, then after Knight takes, Black's recollecting the pawn. But there's some congestion issues here to appreciate, and you know maybe Black should do something about this d5 square, and maybe with careful play and a bit of generosity white only has a slight edge here uh, so um okay so it's interesting stuff but we'll get to the critical bishop f4 this is actually one of the key ways even though it's sort of offering a loose piece target it seems in a way daft to offer this loose piece target 
where this queen b4 seems to be quite dangerous potentially. So we're in the main line, bishop f4. So black plays this check. So white has to be a little bit careful, of course, here. And in fact, um, yeah, there, there's some interesting options. Uh, you obviously, you know, you, you want to address the loose piece issue. So, you know, don't blunder the piece on f4 uh, in various ways. Uh, no. But actually, remarkably, knight c3, even though that appears to blunder the uh, piece on f4, why it ends up um, with a slightly better position after knight d5 because there's a c7 a8 issue. But after that, the knight gets trapped in the corner. So it's not as clear as you might think because that knight eventually gets trapped in the corner. And actually, I think it leads to almost like an even position. So that's a fascinating bit of trivia about knight c3. I, I know some people seem to think knight c3, maybe because a computer says so that it's okay. Actually, it's 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 maybe just leading to equality, this interesting piece sack. It is an interesting piece set, but it's only leading to equality. Uh, the thing to be really uh, aware of here is the blunder move queen d2 this this if they play this they've really justified for you that small probability of success <laughs> with the england gambit of great success here you should be laughing about this <laughs> laughing with this move because after queen takes b2 what does white play it's a disaster if they play queen c3 yeah you just pin their queen bishop b4 Uh, so that is like a total uh, disaster move, Queen D two. Yeah, that's that's why you would like try and play in, uh, uh, for, for this little trick. It's it's not really that significant a trick. Uh, so the sensible move here, and it can be transposed into with either Knight C three or Bishop D two. Uh, so on Knight C three, Queen takes. They should play Bishop D two. Uh, so and that transposes into the decent things. So we're going to have a look at it at this with this route though, with the bishop d2 route. So queen takes here. So bishop d2 is the strong move. So queen queen takes there. Now here there's another <laughs> little trap. If they don't play the strong move knight c3, which guarantees white at least a small to large advantage. If they play this move, it's another disaster move here. Because black again uh, really tortures white on these dark square weaknesses with the king in the center with this nasty pin. After bishop b4, uh, it, it is a total disaster for white. Uh, for example, um, so after bishop b4, if queen d2, uh, we, we can uh, take here, yeah, and they, they take this to protect the rook, but they, they leave c1 behind. It's, it's checkmate there. So yeah, it's it's a total disaster there. Otherwise, if they take here, you just take this rook. Yeah, it's 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 a massacre line. So white has to tread a little bit carefully. White has to have uh, the wits around to play this more dynamic move, knight c3 here, and it's so bad for black that I want to flip the board. It's that bad. We're going to flip the board to give the more positive white perspective. So you should be laughing with white now if you get to this position with knight c3. Okay, so now if they try bishop b4, say, uh, so we're going to have a look at bishop b4 and knight b4. Let's say bishop b4. You play rook b1, so it's like a poison pawn they've eaten. And the thing is with knight d5, this is instructively rebounding against c7. Uh, the queen is a tempo, t you know, gaining target. Uh, no sort of parrying of knight d5 and, and it's really forcing the king to have to fend the poor c7 pawn uh, so for example if the bishop takes queen takes king d8 uh, this is uh, anything black does it is pretty disastrous here uh, queen g5 check uh, this position when it's getting a big advantage like this you might have to sack uh, one or two pawns but because the king's in the center now, there's actually a super dynamic continuation I've analyzed with the latest Starfish technology here. Guess what white should really, in theory, play here? If I give you 10 seconds, white to play here. If you really want to crush <laughs> this England gambit to the 
to the ground what would you play with white hair okay yeah just castle give up the bishop is it there's actually so much dynamic compensation now after queen takes so here queen takes uh, blacks just not doing anything if it, they try and wriggle out you take another pawn and then knight takes c7 yeah this is just absolutely uh murderous you know picking up material with interest if we go back there there's a few uh, little branches here to, to look at in this position so you might consider well queen takes a2 well here just rook d1 and then they're back to king d8 and now here actually knight g5 is good knight h6 e6 is a real bone crusher here after d6 e7 check you can basically undermine that pawn st structure soon this little pawn structure but first weaken the back row this is a real crushing uh, resource uh, because you can see that actually yeah it's going to end rather embarrassingly for black <laughs> like that yeah that's an entertaining variation here it's it's a real bone crusher let's have a look at that variation again so this is all a total nightmare for black here after you know knight g5 um so we had a look at this e6 d6 so I'm mentioning here e7 because I think with the latest stockfish technology this is actually more accurate than the wiki article which mentioned e takes f7 so this is the most incisive e7 yeah it's a new little trick if you don't know about it yeah it's a fantastic trick you weaken the back row then you blow up the pawn chain and then you embarrass black completely yeah it's uh if knight takes e7 there then knight takes and this could even be even more quick and embarrassing uh, the wiki approach is, is is still good with perhaps older computers being involved e takes f7 this is still good for white as well because here you can still do a, some sort of thematic sack to rip apart that pawn chain and black's king safety is is largely uh, very suspect so that their king shouldn't last too long in that position you're going to end up mating them or winning lots of material so it, it really is a horror story if white plays the cards right uh, it's a total horror story this position if the black king has to end up defending c7 that really is uh, what i'd call a major backfire backfire so this gambit does have the advantage uh you know of being a kind of default uh, you know, like JavaScript is kind of default uh, language in, in the browser. It's kind of default that you can get to it by default. But unfortunately, um, you're you're playing a big gambling game that if White really knows their stuff, you end up in essentially a completely lost position. So I, 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 f I feel I'm a naughty sort of person because I've played gambits too much in Blitz. Uh, I've stayed away largely from the Budapest. My favourite has been the Albin counter gamut with later ideas of F6 because I, I like the power of the pieces that I experienced. But really, if you want to be a sophisticated player to uh, 1D4, you can play, you can have your cake and eat it for free, really, generally. If if you you can even play things like you know really solid systems like the queen's game except if the queen's game decline and later work your way to weaken dark squares subtly with positional play all the gambits there are they are a bit dodgy by definition when you have to give up material and there's refutations available like this which could really backfire horrifically here against your king but okay i hope you enjoyed this little tour of uh, the england gambit maybe i'll i'll try it in bullet chess i don't recommend it on anything else but if you if you're really crazy yeah maybe try it as a surprise on someone unsuspecting okay uh i hope you got something from this um yeah if you want to try these formatics at chess world bitly slash chess world or king's crusher tv if you registered there i'll set up a formatic tournament or two for the england gambit uh, check out the playlist bitly slash leaders chess or bitly slash stockfish chess okay comments questions like share subscribes with the notification bell all really appreciated thanks very much